I get asked a lot, and I mean a lot, what are my favorite watches? And it's really, really difficult to pick favorite watches when you're a watch lover and you have quite a few. But this series is gonna be about, well, what are the best from the last year type of thing. And we're gonna do this with all our favorite people that you guys love that appear on the channel. So we're gonna go around, ask them, what's your favorite watches and have them show us. So we're gonna start this today with me. Are you ready? I am ready, sir. Okay, let's start with this guy. So this is a Platinum Daytona. I think this is a very understated watch, other than when you feel it, it weighs a ton. It's just very elegant. I know you don't love the bezel, do you? I'm just not a huge fan of the brown. You're not? No, I mean, it, it, it's not bad, but I like the black, like the real crisp but with black the bezel. blue, it's a beautiful blue, and this has the little baguettes on the hour markers. I know, I love the dial. Very, very discreet. But just imagine if this had the black ceramic bezel. I think it looks better with the brown. <laughs> Feel the weight of it. I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. It is insane. It, what's crazy is that it's heavier than that massive chunk of gold. I haven't got yeah. to that one yet. I know. <laughs> But this is one of my favorite watches. I think it's very understated. It's just beautiful. Tell me why you bought that watch. For many reasons. One, it's a Platinum Daytona, which is like the flagship Daytonas, and I, I love the Daytona itself. Uh, I think the blue is very, very special, and they only put the, this color blue in Platinum watches. I don't know if you knew that or not. No. Um, I personally love the brown bezel that you don't but I just think it's a very cool watch. And it's, like I say, it's understated. You can wear it, it's not flashy. And if you feel it on your wrist. I mean, it's just big, massive yeah. thing on, on your wrist. I mean, it's not a cheap watch. It's a very expensive watch. How much do they go for? Um, there's some, this watch right now is about 120,000. Okay. I think the list on it's closer to 95. Okay. So- uh, Did you pay retail? I, I paid retail for this right. watch, yeah, fortunately. So yeah, beautiful piece, so right? So when would you wear this then? Give me an example of when you would pull this out of your uh, safety deposit box. Anytime, really. I mean, this is one of those watches that you can go anywhere. You can go for a you know, beautiful dinner, um, or you could go to the car wash, right? I'm not saying I would wear it to wash the car. I actually have, haven't I? I did that. <laughs> I hope my watch is waterproof. Oh yeah, you probably shouldn't wear a watch. Well, it's too late now. <laughs> So wash it. <laughs> it's an everyday watch and, and it's not remotely ostentatious. So yeah, fun, fun piece. It's also one of those where if you know, you know, kind of things, you know, yes. like if someone sees you wearing it, that's a watch enthusiast. They know it's a platinum Daytona. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's true. That's true. And another reason is because it's good for the muscles. <laughs> I mean, this thing weighs, I don't know, it's over half a pound. Yeah, it's super heavy. Super heavy, super heavy. So that's one of my top picks. Next one is this, and I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, Glasschutter. It's German. This is not even comparable price-wise to the Daytona. This watch, I think, lists for around $10,000. I bought this watch with a slight discount, so I think I paid like six or $7,000 for it, I don't remember. Beautiful watch, very, very elegant, goes with absolutely anything. And it's unique, because it has the green, I don't know what you call this dial. It's like a faded dial. It's it's not Star, solid. Starburst? Or is that when it's got like a shininess to it? That's a great question. I don't know. I just Sun, think it's some, pretty... Sunburst. Sunburst. Yeah. Sunburst. Um, I think that would be more of a gold colour dial. Sunburst. Maybe, yeah. But no, it, it is gorgeous. But that. it's pretty, right? Yeah. And it has a moon phase. I think that's a moon phase. It, it is. A date. And then it has the complication of the separate second. So it is actually, for a very simple looking watch, it is actually quite complicated. Yeah, um, it's so complicated, I can't open it. Look away, there we are. <laughs> and then the back of it, as I break it, the back of it is also beautiful. And again, Glasshutter is not a very well-known brand. Um, I think it's, you know, one, one level less than Langer, a hey, Langer and Sonner, which is another fantastic brand. And uh, I was debating whether that should be in this tray, but I wanted to keep it where, you know, it doesn't have to cost a fortune. Yeah. And, and this watch, although you know not inexpensive, is not greatly expensive. I think this is a beautiful piece for the money. Yeah, it is, it's gorgeous. And I have seen you wear that quite a bit. I have, yeah. Like even if we just FaceTime, you'd be wearing it around the house. Like yeah, it's, 
Pretty watch, right? Yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty I, watch. I really like that. Yeah, I like that too. Would you wear that? Yeah. Not on that bracelet, but probably. Yeah. But would you put a black strap on it? Yeah, or like a just a you know a steel neon yellow. Yeah, yeah. Just like a steel bracelet. Um, yeah, I mean you know me with with my kind of watch choices. I I I really really love that watch, but not necessarily for me. Right. No, totally get that. But anyway, definitely one of my top picks. And this one here is just gorgeous. <laughs> I love this watch. I love, love this watch. It's the Audemars Piguet Offshore Summer Edition. It's a limited edition piece. Very heavy, feel the weight of this one. I, I mean, I know, it's, it, Stupid, it's right? just solid. And with all of the angles that they cut, you know, obviously everything's very sharp and not sharp as in uncomfortable, but like, you know, very sharp edges. It's just, it feels like it's worth what it's worth. And it's huge. I mean, <laughs> this is this is a big watch. Hold that up compared to the glass shooter. Where's the glass shooter? <laughs> Actually, the, the glass shooter isn't that small. No. I think it's 40 millimeter. But with the pushes and everything going on, I mean, it's just enormous, isn't it? Right, and next to the Daytona. Yeah. Significantly <laughs> smaller, right? Yeah. But this is, it's just a huge watch and it's gorgeous. It's um, its the offshore 44 millimeter. Let me open it. Has a tang buckle, buckle not a deployment class. They make them so tight. That's what she said. There's the back of it. You wore this a ton this year. I love this watch. Yeah. I remember when you bought it. Very happy with that purchase. Yeah, I mean, these are my top, top picks for the year. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love all my watches, I, I really do. But, you know, sometimes you have a year where you have certain favorites like cars or clothing, it goes in and out, you know. But uh, which one of these would be your pick? Um, Good question. So, I mean, he says wearing a Garmin watch now. Not, <laughs> without sounding like a like I'm being horrible, because I do love them all for very different reasons. You know I love the Daytona. This is very cool. Probably, it would probably be this. It's very it ostentatious be, right? for, the, for me, but like, yeah. But it's not really, I mean, on the wrist, it's not ostentatious, is it? I, no. It's, it's fun. We, yeah, weirdly, when you wear it, it doesn't just, look it's as... It's just fun. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a, it's a fun piece and I, and I enjoy it. Have you ever changed the color of the uh, bracelet or the strap on it? No. No, I've kept this one white because yeah. I, think, I think it needs to be white. Yeah, I mean, it really makes the dial pop, doesn't it? Right. It's, I think, the nicest watch. And how much is that one? List was about 65 or 67. They're now selling about 90. Really? Yeah. It's a limited edition, but it's it's very popular. Everybody wants this watch. And, you know, they fluctuate. Sometimes they're, you look and they're 70 and sometimes it'll yeah. be 90 and who knows. And actually, for a solid gold, and I mean, there are some watches, like if you get a gold Rolex, where it's like, cool, yeah, this is a gold Rolex, but it doesn't feel... It's not super heavy. Right. That feels like you're wearing a gold brick. It's like they filled it with lead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So for 60-odd 60, 60 grand, the fact that you're getting the complication of the chronograph, you are getting a gold watch, it, it's an AP, like, it, it's a lot of watch for the money. You know, the curb appeal, if you can call yeah, it a lot that, of curb of that appeal. watch. You, you're paying a lot for the name. Right. right. But it is a great watch and hopefully, you know, maintains value, which is also never a bad thing. So, uh, so yeah. And I feel like that bit. thing will run forever as well. Like you can... It feels like you could smack somebody down in the head with it, right? I, mean. I didn't say that. But, but, but you could. Get away from me, bam, <laughs> knock out, right? Seriously though. I mean, yeah. yeah I, you'd probably break your wrist at the same time. It's so crazy though that this is heavier. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's insane. Because when you look at it, it looks like a very sort of svelte watch. Very heavy though. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. You, you'd never know. And then this is like fresh air. Right, exactly. But this isn't light either. What is this? Stainless steel. Oh, it is stainless. stainless yeah, but it's like you say, it's got a, it's got some heft to it, hasn't it? Yeah. But, oh, very uh, nice. th th this is filled with lead. <laughs> Look how far you've come with your watches, sir. Yeah, yeah. Gone are the days of the diamonds and the bling bling. I mean, think about if I had asked you this same question eight years ago. Now you'd have had to put sunglasses on to look at it. Ironically, you would have had one of those in there, but it would have yes. been all blinged out, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would have been blinged out, yeah. It would have been blinged out. I traded my blinged out one, so. Yeah, it's very cool to like see the progression. And, and I think that's the nice thing about watches, isn't it? Is that it is something that change, that, you know, your taste in them changes. It does. And the thing about 
both Rolex and AP and Patek for that matter and, and some others, they're instantly recognizable because they have their own form, right? They have a shape that is, is just unique to them, uh, as is you know, Rolex. I mean, there are lots of watches that look like Rolex, but there's only Rolex. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, exactly. Rolex uh, just got fined. Did you see that? Yeah. Hundred million dollars they got fined. I don't quite understand why. Uh, something about not being able to put their watches online and sell them, or the ADs can't sell them online. But yeah. uh, why would they be fined for that? I, I mean, wasn't it by the like French authorities? Yeah, like fair sale, trade commission, yeah, whatever. You can go into a store just as easily as buy it online now. Well, I, I guess it's probably just because they banned them. Like they took away the opportunity for these companies to fairly sell the product, right? I guess, but it's not like you can get them anyway. No, yeah, you know, exactly. Like sold out online, yeah. sold out, yeah. Inquire at the store. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Add yourself to the wait list. But, uh, but anyway, so yeah, those are, my, those are my three picks for the year. And uh, we'll be doing a series. It'll yeah. be fun, like one every six, seven weeks or something like that. We'll go ask people what they really like and uh, we'll, we'll show you. Do you know who I'm looking forward to seeing? You are looking forward to seeing Danny at Happy Jewelers. Yeah, yes actually, that, Seth, that, that'll you're be looking interesting. looking forward to Seth. I am, I'm, I'm looking forward to both of those. Who else? I'm looking forward to Mr. Jacob Arabo. I am too, he has an extensive collection of watches and they're not all Jacobs. Exactly. Yeah, and, and I think that, that'll be really interesting, right? Because I'm actually sad I didn't put a Jacob in here as well. I should have put a Jacob in here. I should have done four and included a Jacob because I loved Jacob. You do wear your rainbow All the time. Michael one a lot, don't All you? the time. Yeah. Only because it's got your name on it. No, I like it. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you liked them. Let us know in the comments if you think this is a good idea. If you think it's a terrible idea, tell us and we we'll probably will do it anyway. So you thought I was going to say we won't do it, right? Um, no, but if you think it's a terrible idea, then, then we, we won't do it. But I, I think it might be interesting. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Tell us anyway. <laughs> Did I mention tell us anyway? With that, I'm saying goodbye. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. We're in it to win it. And let us know what your three favorite watches are. Right? Yes. What are your three favorites? This one, this one, and this one. Bye.